In part B of this experiment, we look at alkanes and some related compounds. Amongst all the organic compounds that we will encounter, alkanes are the simplest. They contain only carbon and hydrogen, and the only kinds of bonds we find in alkanes are single bonds. The formula of alkanes is CnH2n plus 2 where n can be any positive whole number. So for example, if there is a 1 after carbon, then what does there have to be after H? Well, 2 times 1 plus 2 is 4. So the formula of the one with 1 carbon is CH4. If there's, say, 5 carbons, well, then n is 5. So C5H, 2 times 5 is 10 plus 2. 12. So C5H12, and the name of that is pentane. We describe alkanes as being totally saturated, uh, which does not mean the same thing as when you're talking about saturation with solutions. When we talk about organic compounds and say they are saturated, that simply means that there is no way to add more hydrogen atoms to the carbon atoms through a reaction. All of the carbons have as many hydrogen atoms as they are able to accommodate. We're also going to look at the very closely related compounds, cycloalkanes, which are essentially alkanes that just have a ring in them. However, to form a ring, that means that uh, you have to drop two hydrogens off of the molecule. So a cycloalkane that has a single ring that involves attaching the ends of two carbon chains, so that's where we drop two hydrogens, will only have a formula of CnH2n plus, uh, excuse me, CnH2n. So for example, if n is 8, C8, H would be 16, CH, C8, H16. Now, for part B, I'm going to display some virtual molecular models using software that I have available to me. And I will show these models of alkanes, some cycloalkanes, and alkyl halides. And I will add a little bit of narration uh, where needed to supplement this. Alkyl halides are compounds that contain uh, one bond between carbon and a halogen halogens being fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. You're then going to draw these molecules as expanded molecules and condensed structures. Now, if those words aren't familiar to you, then what you're going to need to do is watch some videos that I'm going to provide here. So you need to know these next topics very well in order to do this lab successfully, or at least you need to be familiar with them. You need to understand the different ways of representing organic compounds, in particular representing them as expanded structures and as condensed structures. You need to understand the concept of isomers. Isomers are uh, compounds that have the same molecular formula but different connections of atoms. You need to have learned the naming rules for alkanes and cycloalkanes. And uh, also, you need to have a little bit of familiarity with naming alkyl halides, a topic I cover very, very briefly uh, in my videos on naming. And I've addressed all of these, as I mentioned, in my videos for Chapter 10. So it is absolutely essential that you watch those videos before that you carry out this part of the experiment. Uh, of course, your lecture instructor might also have covered this material, in which case I just strongly recommend that you watch those videos to give you a good refresher. But I'm not going to cover all of that material again in this video because it would simply be redundant, and I will provide you a link to that information. To help you out, I'm going to provide a link to my course notes for Chapter 10 uh, with the first video that goes with chapter 10. Part C 
requires you to identify functional groups that you will see in several molecules. Now, the instructions tell you that, uh, that you are supposed to be observing models of these molecules, but that doesn't really make sense. The molecules that you're supposed to be observing are already drawn for you on page 157, and several additional molecules also appear at the bottom of page 157 and the top of 158 for you to uh, identify. So you'll want to, again, be sure to look at the video in Chapter 10 that's specifically on functional groups before you attempt this part. And I would actually recommend doing Part C before Part B, simply because the material on functional groups comes before the material on naming, which you will need in Part B. And you'll definitely want to read the beginning of the lab because it also illustrates all the functional groups that you need. Now, my video discusses benzene rings, which are the functional group of aromatic compounds, but it only shows one way in which a benzene ring is represented. And the way that your lab manual does it is just uh, an alternative way. So there are three ways that we can draw benzene rings and they are all shown here. So your lab manual prefers to use the method here, which is a hexagon with a circle in it. Uh, in my video, this is the form I use, and this is an equivalent form as well. Of course, these could all be found rotated onto their sides, and they would all stand for a benzene ring. The functional group associated with benzene rings is aromatic compounds. So if you are asked to give the functional group, don't say benzene, say aromatic compound. With that, I'm going to go ahead and get into these uh, virtual molecular models that go into part B. If you'd like to stop here, go watch the videos from chapter 10 and then come back and do the labeling of functional groups. That probably would be a good use of your time as well. So this is the first of the molecular models. It is methane. The darker spheres represent carbon atoms, and the white spheres stand for hydrogen atoms. You will notice that the shape of the carbon atom in this molecule, as well as for all carbon atoms in the rest of this video, is a tetrahedral shape. So the bond angles are 109.5 degrees. Here is ethane with two carbon atoms and six hydrogen atoms. Again, bond angles of 109.5 degrees for this molecule and for all the remaining molecules that we will see.
Here we have cyclopentane. This is the first of our cycloalkanes that we're looking at. You'll notice that the molecule is not flat, even though it is drawn as a flat pentagon on paper. Notice how that one carbon pokes out a bit. We say it has kind of like an envelope structure, with that being like the envelope flap sticking out. Here is cyclohexane. This is not the same thing as benzene. You'll notice it has twice as many hydrogens as benzene. Although it might look flat at first, if we look at it from the side, you'll clearly see that this is not a flat molecule. We call this a chair shape in organic chemistry. It's probably harder to describe why uh, than it would be worth, so I'm not going to go over that. But you will see clearly there that those carbon atoms do not all lie in a plane. It is not flat. Benzene, when we study it, we will see is indeed flat. All of the angles in this molecule are approximately 109.5 degrees, and all of those atoms are tetrahedral shaped. Here's our first alkyl halide, chloromethane, and here we add a new sphere, green, for chlorine. We now take a look at another alkyl halide. This one is 1,2-dibromoethane, and those reddish dot, uh, spheres stand for the two bromine atoms. And our final molecule for this video, 2-iodopropane, with that violet sphere representing an iodine atom.